السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين الحمد لله we have reached chapter 11 of this book and chapter 11 is titled خوف الفقر the fear of poverty سبحان الله now we live in a society where a person's value and true worth is based upon their net worth subhanallah if you look at all our leaders they're from rich families they are rich they are wealthy people who are respected are not respected because of their morals or their character or their behavior or their knowledge rather they are judged according to their net worth subhanallah and so when a person lives in this sort of society then even sometimes after having wealth having enough wealth to make ends meet a person continuously stays in this sadness and grief of poverty and the fear of losing it all subhanallah always having this fear of losing it all so inshallah let's read the introduction to the chapter and then we'll go on to read the signs and symptoms and then move on to the practical treatments inshallah so when the heart is not correctly aligned to the decree of the almighty then this satisfaction will always arise a dislike of poverty can sit with a person when they are poor But by far the more widespread disease is the fear of poverty when wealth is in place Subhanallah So naturally when a person is poor, they don't want to be poor But when a person has wealth, Subhanallah Then because they are maybe sometimes because they haven't achieved that wealth through halal means Or for whatever reason because of their love of dunya in their hearts The love of this world in their hearts Even after having so much They don't feel content They don't feel satisfied Subhanallah They still fear losing it all Subhanallah The general characteristics of this fear Is that one's cash, capital, estates or resources Will be destroyed or diminished Thus impacting on lifestyle and esteem When this fear is placed in the heart of a person the, king, the clinging greed intensifies and, and they redouble their efforts to accumulate more wealth Subhanallah And so this fear of poverty drives them It drives them to continuously, continuously Even, even after achieving so much wealth uh, uh, Accumulating so much wealth They continue to make more and more and more And spending so much time and effort And of course there's no, there's no harm in regards in terms of Islam In earning halal income Earning halal wealth By having halal businesses Of course by all means right? But because of this fear right, I'm going to lose it all right? And when I lose my wealth right, Then I, that's it I am nothing Subhanallah right? So this is what I mentioned before How in modern society right, A lot of people Our value right, Value system right, Is based on people's net worth right? And so that affects ourselves as well right? So if we have The less that we have Right, the lesser we think of ourselves The more we have The more we think of ourselves Subhanallah right, So we attribute wealth To respect Self-respect and honor Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Being the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Being one who believes in one Allah right, Having iman right, Being a person who performs salah right, Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That is true freedom Is in the servitude of Allah That is true respect That is true honor But we don't find honor and respect in these things Having knowledge of the Qur'an Practicing upon the deen of Allah Being given the ability to practice on the deen of Allah right? That is true, res- true respect and honor But because we attributed it Or because society attributes respect and honor To your net worth Then when we don't have so much then We feel less ourselves And back to the point right, Is we fear losing it all If I lose wealth If I lose suddenly the stock market crashes right, Or Bitcoin went down right, Subhanallah I feel like a piece of me is gone right, Subhanallah Without doubt Dissatisfaction with one's allotted portion Goes hand in hand with spending little Or no time in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Or performing genuine acts Of charity The pursuit of worldly riches and comforts Become the sufferer's goal in life The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Whoever makes the hereafter his goal Allah makes him his heart rich And organizes his affairs And the world comes to him whether he wants it or not and whoever makes the world his goal goal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his poverty right before his eyes and disorganizes his affairs and the world does not come to him except that which has been decreed to him and subhanallah 
subhanallah and you know something to ponder about is how many times have we made a decision right, based on, a, on our akhirah right? and I'm talking about finance, financial decision right? if we have an issue when it comes to uh, fasting right? oh, you come straight to the imam or the shaykh brother you know can you please help me you know uh, is my fast broken right? for example salah right? you made a mistake in your salah you'll come to the imam you'll come to the person who you think is more knowledgeable than you Brother, you know, help me out. You know, I don't know this issue. Can you please tell me? But how many times have we made a, d- a financial decision? Right? But before we made it, right, we went and checked with someone knowledgeable to see if that is permissible, right? if that is going to be pleasing to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? Subhanallah. Right? Rather, we would we would partake in haram. Right? We would partake in a haram transaction. Right? Subhanallah. Whether it's investing, you know, today, alhamdulillah, right, this, is a, this is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, where we have the doors of risk are so broad. Right, first, there's so many different ways you can invest. Right, we have the crypto market, we have the stock market, we have um, people who, who trade in, in currencies. Right, we have all sorts, right, subhanallah, and invest, investing, investment opportunities, hedge funds, right, then the list goes on. But before we go into these things, Right, securing, you know, trying to secure our future. Right? Have we, have we, you know, taken the matter to someone who's knowledgeable that is this according to Islam, or is our fear of poverty making us just put go into whatever is winning, put our eggs in that basket, and then, you know, whatever, you know, inshallah, I'll, I'll earn money. Right? How are we expected to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Yes, we might even be someone who's performing salah, but our risk is haram. Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes a person who is ash'ath aghrab. He is a person who has disheveled hair, dirty clothes. And he says, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, oh Allah, please help me, oh Allah, help me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, but his food is haram, his clothes is haram, fa'anna yustajabu lah. How will his dua be accepted? Subhanallah. So inshallah tomorrow we'll continue with the signs, the signs and symptoms of this, of this illness of khawful faqr being fearful of poverty and then inshallah we go into the practical treatments through the Quran and hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to cleanse our hearts from the fear, from unduly fear of poverty ameen wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakallah khair ahsin